Whoa, time to get out your history. Put on your history hat. Marcus Conti reporting on John Bolton's statement invoking the Monroe Doctrine. Whoa, you remember the Monroe Doctrine? <laughs> right? You remember from elementary school in the 1820s, Monroe, the Monroe Doctrine where everything is ours, kind of like Manifest Destiny. So John Bolton was on CNN uh, with Jake Tapper, and uh, they they dueled it out. And Jake Tapper actually did a good job. I mean, I hate to say, you know, you got to give kudos where kudos is deserved, but Jake Tapper did a good job pushing John Bolton on the invasion of Venezuela, invoking the Monroe Doctrine on the sovereign nation of Venezuela. Let's take a look at what happened. So here's uh, John Bolton. This was uh, yesterday on CNN. Let's turn to South America. You tweeted on Friday about Venezuela's Nicolas Maduro, quote, those who continue to support a dictator that violates human rights and steals from the starving should not be allowed to walk around with impunity, unquote. Let's look at that that uh, tweet was powerful, right? So those continue to support a dictator that violates human rights and steals from the starving should not be allowed to walk around with impunity. The United States will continue to take appropriate actions against Maduro and those aligned with him. Ooh, those are fighting words. Just as a matter of course, and this didn't start with the Trump administration, the United States supports any number of dictators who violate human rights, including the leaders of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the UAE. Should those who support those dictators not be allowed to walk around with impunity? You know, All right, before he talks, right? So Jake Tapper did a great job setting that up. He said Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, uh, you know, uh, UAE, right? All the dictators all around the world get so, so the U.S. supports them. Well, now, 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 Maduro is suddenly a a vile dictator, right? That I mean, it, it, Maduro and Venezuela, you know, are are pale in turn in in contrast to Saudi Arabia where there's uh, you know Sharia law and women are you know beaten and and ro- stoned in the middle of the road right so not to litigate that but but the pa- the fact is Jake Tapper did a good job Jake good job Jakey boy setting up the uh, discussion I I've, I've put out roughly 150 tweets on Venezuela this is a new experiment in public diplomacy uh, the fact is that we are trying to rally support uh, for the peaceful transition of power from Maduro to Juan Guaido, whom we recognize as president. Uh, and I think uh, since most of my tweets also come out in Spanish because we want to reach the Latin American audience in particular, that a lot of people, especially on the political left, in the hemisphere and around the world, now understand that the failed experiment of Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro needs to end. So No, nobody understands that but you. The United States is promoting that that logic that uh, the failed regime of Hugo Chavez. Right? All the, a lot of the problems in Venezuela. It's not to to analyze the problems of Venezuela. It's our action in Venezuela. That's the issue. Right? The issue is what is our position in uh, Venezuela? The United States, the Americans. What's our position? And he's Bolton is lying, saying that it's a that the all of the problems of Venezuela are the result of a failed regime of Hugo Chavez in, in 1999 and then the inheritance of that through fair elections or whatever kind of elections uh, by uh, Nicolas Maduro. So Mr. Mustachio here, Mr. Macho, uh, national security advisor, very important guy. This is Trump's swamp. This is the swamp creature that Trump puts in place. So I'd like to see as broad a coalition as we can put together to replace Maduro, to replace the whole corrupt regime. That's what we're trying to do. Well, certainly Maduro is nobody that I would defend in any way. But well, that's good to hear. But do you, do you not see that uh, the United States support for other brutal dictators around the world undermines the, the credibility of the argument you're making? No. Watch him dodge this question, right? So, again, Jake Tapper did a good job. He followed up on the, on the, on the comment because Bolton's a master at, uh, you know, at... at uh, these, these guys are spooks, but he set it up again, right? He said, um, he said, well, what about the other dictators? I don't think it does. I think it's separate. And I think, look, in this administration... So he says, I think, I'll back it up. I know I'm chopping it up a little bit. But he says that, that Venezuela, the situation of Venezuela is separate 
regime. That's what we're trying to do. Well, certainly Maduro is nobody that uh, I would defend in any way. But well, that's good to hear. But do you, do you not see that uh, the United States support for other brutal dictators around the world undermines the the credibility of the argument you're making? No, I don't think it does. I think it's separate. And I think, look, in this administration, uh, we're not a- afraid to use the phrase Monroe Doctrine. This-, this is a country in our hemisphere. It's been the objective of American presidents going back to Ronald Reagan to have a completely democratic hemisphere. I uh, mentioned back in uh, la- at the end of last year that uh, we're looking very much at the troika of tyranny, including Cuba and Nicaragua, as well as Maduro. Part of the problem in Venezuela is the heavy Cuban presence, 20 to 25,000 Cuban security officials by reports that have been in the public. This is the, the sort of thing that, uh, that we find unacceptable, and that's why we're pursuing these policies. So he invokes the Monroe Doctrine. You heard him there? He says that, uh, and then he also says that Cuba has presence in Venezuela, so that's invocable. So we're going to, I'll dive into what the Monroe Doctrine is. We'll learn it together. By the time the video's over, you'll know what the Monroe Doctrine is. You'll know what Bolton is, uh, is, is talking about. And, uh, all right. I only have a few more seconds, but I want to ask you about Venezuela. Republican Senator Marco Rubio sponsoring legislation to offer TPS status. All right, so that's really it. So what is the Monroe Doctrine, right? That's the the essence of Bolton says, we're allowed to go into Venezuela. We make no, we don't, uh, we're not ashamed or, or, or shy to say that we invoke the Monroe Doctrine. Now, what the fuck is this? What is it? James Monroe, one of the things that he does is say that the new world and the old world are two separate worlds. Monroe Doctrine becomes a centerpiece of American foreign policy. Monroe is saying the Caribbean is our bathtub, we get to play in it. South America, Central America is our sphere of influence. The Monroe Doctrine would be cited as a precedent by many future presidents. William McKinley used it to justify the Spanish-American War. Theodore Roosevelt used it to build the Panama Canal. JFK would cite it when he blocked Soviet ships from Cuba. It has proven to be one of the longest lasting legacies of the first presidents. One reason why Monroe, I think, is not more memorable is because it's tough to think of much of what he ever said that was quotable. Even the doctrine that bears his name was largely the handiwork of his Secretary of State, John Quincy Adams. But James Monroe gave us eight years of peace and prosperity, and that ought to be judged a success for any president. I think when you look at the the sort of founding era presidents, you can say that they're baseline presidents. Each president had a proving moment, and in one way or another, I think each president proved himself. In the end, Monroe would leave as Washington, Jefferson, and Madison had. He declined to run for a third term. So... Let's see what else. Significantly, it was a border issue that led to Monroe's defining moment in office. In December 1823, the president delivered a message to Congress and to the world. Ostensibly, he addressed a minor dispute between Russia and the United States over Alaska. But the speech contained a short paragraph that became his legacy. It stated... The American continents are henceforth not to be considered as subjects for future colonization by any European powers. The Monroe Doctrine is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the actual text. I have it. Just stand by. Our statement that we reject European countries coming in and trying to acquire further territorial gains in this hemisphere. You stay in your hemisphere, we'll stay in ours. It wasn't until 1852 that people began calling it the Monroe Doctrine. By then, it was regarded as Monroe's greatest moment. And yet, he was not the true author. That's a wonderful example of how the presidency is becoming the central... All right, so so that's the Monroe Doctrine. That's what we... This is the actual text, right? The occasion has been judged proper to asserting as a principle in which the rights and interests of the United States are involved, that the, uni- that the American continents, by the free and independent condition with which they have assumed and maintained, are therefore not to be considered as subjects for future colonization 
of any European powers. Now, let's highlight European for a second. All right, hold on a second. I'm being overthrown by the heater. Sorry about that. So, so um, all right. So the second, that's the first key passage, right? That, that uh, henceforth, not to be considered as subjects for future colonization by any European powers, right? Well, is, is Venezuela a European power? Is the, w what powers are being colonized over, what, colon what, is, what is the assertion here that, Venezuela is being overthrown by a foreign power? Is that, what, is that the assertion? Is that the fear? Is really that what's going on? Is that they're fearful of Russia and China taking over? It is revealing, right? So here's the other one. We owe it, therefore, to candor and to amicable relations existing between the United States and those powers to declare that we should consider any attempt on their part to extend their system to any portion of the hemisphere as dangerous to our peace and safety. This is the Monroe Doctrine, right? It gets a little confusing, so try to stay with it. With the existing colonies or dependencies of any European power, we have not interfered and shall not interfere. Oh, I thought we're not supposed to interfere. But with the governments who have declared their independence and maintained it, and those independents we have on great consideration and on principles acknowledged, we could not view any in in interposition for the purpose of oppressing them or controlling in any other manner their destiny by any European power in any other light than as manifestation as an unfriendly disposition towards the United States. Right? You, you follow, you get the gist of what he's saying is that if, if a colony is set up, right, in South America or in the Americas, whatever that means, right, and, and they're okay, and we're okay with it, they're okay with it, everybody's okay with it, right? But if somebody else comes in and then tries to interfere in that, that shit, then there's, we got a problem. Then that's the Monroe Doctrine. Hey, it's ours. We own everything, right? That's the essence of of what the Monroe Doctrine is. But it sounds more like this, right? It sounds more like, you remember Manifest Destiny in, in, in elementary school? Manifest Destiny, the, the Europeans, we came on the East Coast and everything from sea to shining sea was ours. This land is your land. This land is my land. You remember? And that was the Manifest Destiny, right? From California to the New York Island, remember? People Manifest think of it destiny. as the official policy of territorial expansion, the idea that God had blessed America to become an ocean-bound republic in the 19th century. But the truth is, presidents and secretaries of state, they didn't use the phrase Manifest Destiny. It was the slogan of a journalist named John L. O'Sullivan, who invented it in 1845 when he was writing editorials. I only bring it up because it, it sounds more like Manifest Destiny <laughs> that John Bolton is talking about than this, this nonsense of a Monroe Doctrine. About the annexation of Texas and about the boundary dispute with Britain over the Oregon Territory. He said it was blessed by Providence. It was the manifest destiny of the country to become this continental power. It immediately became controversial at the time. The phrase itself was used more by critics than supporters as a way to ridicule expansionism. Whigs and others opposed it. A lot of Northerners thought it was code for spreading slavery. In fact, a lot of manifest destiny advocates, people who believed in territorial expansion, they felt like they had failed. They didn't think the country was spreading widely enough. They wanted all of Mexico. They wanted Canada. They wanted the entire continent to be part of the American Republic. The phrase actually kind of disappeared from American political life until the 1890s when it was reborn as part of the drive to make the United States a global power. Some people began to talk about expanding into the Caribbean or the Pacific. This is the era of the Spanish-American War. And that's when Manifest Destiny became ever more popular. But the irony is by that point, John L. O'Sullivan, he had died in 1895. And when he died, his obituaries didn't even mention the fact. So Manifest Destiny. Manifest destiny, isn't it more that? It sounds like, man. So, so there we go, man. We learned about what did we learn today? We learned <laughs> I feel like fucking.
Professor Conti, Professor, Professor Conti. Uh, so what do we learn? The Manifest Destiny or the, the Monroe Doctrine is being used to justify the illegal coup attempt in Venezuela to overthrow the Maduro regime because John Bolton says it's the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine has kicked in because a European power is trying to trying to take Venezuela is is trying to take something in 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 South America, in Americas, right? That's what he's leaning on, right? I mean, I don't want to let it skate because he makes a, he, you know, people are asking, well, why? Uh, how how do you justify uh, siding? How do you justify going into a sovereign nation who holds free and fair elections that's been self governed that doesn't that doesn't have any warheads, is no threat to anybody. How do you justify going in there and taking over? You point to the hungry people, but then upon further investigation that there really is no, there's, a, there's an economic problem of income and wealth inequality where price in hyperinflation, prices are too high. However, there's also the problem of the country being choked by sanctions by your the, the very people that are, trying to invoke this Monroe Doctrine. So it does become, uh, it's the empire, right? Are we an empire? Right? Is, that the, is that what it is? It's like, if it's not Monroe Doctrine, it's, it's going to be Manifest Destiny. Why don't you just say it? It's just like, it's fucking ours to take, right? That's what John Bolton is saying. It's like, you know, we don't, we're not ashamed to say it. We're, we're, out to, we're out to take over South America. Nicaragua, Cuba, you're next, right? That's that's the you don't have you don't have what we have. You don't have the military industrial complex. You don't have the guns and the bombs and the machinery like we do. And we're going to we're going to just take over, man. That's it. That's just that's the that's the new Monroe doctrine. Trump, you know, guy like Trump loves that shit, right? So, you know, Marcus Conti reporting. <laughs>